Grand Army vs. 13 Reasons Why Grand Army A show about five teen characters from different backgrounds who go through the woes of life while also dealing with the pressure of family, lost friendships, racism, sexuality, and abuse. This is the most realistic a teen show could get. There's no hypersexualization of the teens, and the messages are clear. The characters are very much real, and each and every one of the characters are written with authentic emotions that teens in this generation can very much relate to. It conveys the message, none of us are perfect, but there are consequences to our actions. It doesn't push the false and perverted narrative of us being sex experts or sex experts, but simply being young adults and learning as we go. Grand Army is a powerful show that doesn't paint a picture of teenagers being the most beautiful, the most popular, or even the smartest. The show is diverse. It doesn't just throw a black or brown character in and ignore their culture or experiences as POC. They show the hardships without overdoing it and painting their lives as flat out tragedies or making it seem like they have the same advantages as their white peers. Writers aren't scared to point out their differences. Viewers can recognize the cultures and traditions without the characters' personalities being solely based around it. Their stories are not stereotypical, but real. 13 Reasons Why 13 Reasons Why is a show that exploits teen and abuse victims through over-exaggeration and mockery, and that should have ended after season one. The Netflix show is based off the book written by Jay Asher about a high school freshman, Hannah Baker, who commits suicide and leaves tapes of the 13 Reasons Why. Don't get me wrong, the book was fine and so was season one. Season one was a simple live action of the book. It should have stayed that way instead of the added and unnecessary drama. Over time, the show became a parody of traumatic events and mental illness. Here are a few examples. Villainizing victims. In season two, the writers decide to villainize Hannah Baker by bringing up her past. They bring up the fact she had a history of being a bully before she came to Liberty Heights as if that justifies anything done to her. The fake school shooting. In season four, one of the teachers at Liberty High decides to hold a school shooting drill, where they use fake gun sounds to make the kids actually believe their lives are at risk. Not only is this literal mental abuse to the students in the school, but I'm pretty sure it's illegal to do this without consulting anybody. The downplaying of mental illness. In the first season, Clay repeatedly envisions Hannah, even though she's dead. He has full-on conversations with her and relives past experiences he has had with her. Cool, but they really should have addressed it sooner. Over time, in the later seasons, Clay begins to show more severe signs of mental illness, like setting a car on fire, standing over a drunk girl's body, showing up to school with flaked blood on his chest and a knife in his hand. And let's not forget his mental breakdown during the fake drill. He gets so upset, he snatches the gun from one of the police officers which could have resulted in him being seriously harmed, among other things. Clay's mental illness was used as a dramatic effect for the show, instead of awareness, which is what the show was originally, originally made for. They really strayed away. Lastly, forced rape is redemption. In season 4, Bryce is all of a sudden remorseful for the multiple rapes he's committed and finds himself trying to check another rapist. Like, boy, if it ain't the pot calling the kettle black. I just, I just don't get it. How does, seri- how does a serial rapist who's raped multiple people all of a sudden feel guilt? Please, make it make sense. To sum it all up, 13 Reasons Why is a show that exaggerates mental health, rape, and trauma for drama and shock value. The show is a joke.